Hi everyone, welcome to Pixel Studio Now You Know session where we share interesting information, basically anything in the universe. For today's session, we have Roger who will share with you things about Ikigai. You want to know more about it? Roger, take it away. All yours. Hey, thank you Indra. So for 2021, the first sharing session by me, I will talk about Ikigai. But before we go into that, I came across this report. Uh, the World Happiness Report 2020. So it, it's basically a survey of a state of global happiness. Interestingly enough, they went to ask over 156 countries, uh, their citizens, and this is actually the eighth edition that they have published. So they have been doing this for a long time now, and all the links and references will be provided at the end of my slides. So nice. check it out. In year 2020, basically they wanted to focus on the three categories of environment, basically social, urban, and natural, because as we know, our state of mind and our situation is always strongly affected by our environment. So people in the social, like for example, in the cities might not be as happy as people in the nature and urban lifestyle because their life is so much more fast paced. So having said that, do you guys know who the happiest countries are in the world? Any idea? Not yeah. Singapore. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so Singapore. Like Sweden or something. So, so the first reply to that question is all the European countries, like you have Denmark, all the Switzerland, all this, right? So you, that, that is precisely what was reflected uh, in this report. So the top five countries based on the data collected from 2017 to 2019, as you can see, number one is Finland followed by Denmark, Switzerland, Iceland. You, you start to see a little pattern here. The European countries, they have this culture, right? They have this uh, bonding in their communities that make them so happy. Shining the spotlight back to Singapore, we are number 31. Wow, 31. Uh, wow. <laughs> yes. So let's compare. What are we doing good and what are we not doing not so good? If you look at the chart right now, take a look at rank number 31st, which is us, Singapore. We're actually doing quite well. In fact, better than most on the, in the top 20, the top 10s. So why is it that we are ranked all the way in the 31 place? A good explanation would be if you look at uh, our, how we are doing on the other side, other categories on this scale. We're not doing so well in terms of our generosity, how, how we are treating our fellow communities, how, how uh, we have the freedom to make the life choices, which is actually in orange. Uh, the social support that we get and the expected health expectancy. So I think this branches a lot of questions and these reports basically highlights a lot of uh, issues that we are facing as a community, as a, as a country. So where else can we go from here? What do we do from here? Now that we know that, hey, we are not performing as, as, as good as we can, uh, what is missing? Let's take a look now at the different narratives of happiness. Uh, earlier on, we mentioned that the European countries are doing quite well. In fact, they are among the top 10, top five. So what are they, what are they doing different from what, what we are doing? So in terms of being happy, different countries and different cultures have their different approaches. The Swedish, they embrace the idea of logom, and it is said to be their basis of their national psyche, one of the one of consensus and equality. So basically, they view one another in their community as equal. On the other side, Danish have something called Huga. Basically, the little book of Huga I have here. Mm, it's nice. uh, being able to be comfortable in the moment. So if you look at uh, books on Huga available in the National Library Board, right? It all has little pictures of cozy fireplace, things that make you happy in general, like having uh, your favorite people around you, spending your evening watching uh, Netflix or look, looking through a nice book, things that will make you happy. This is how Danish uh, people in Denmark approach their lifestyle. Let's take a look else at what else uh, other countries are doing. So there is a saying, Carpe Diem. I'm not sure if you are familiar mm, with it. Yeah. So it means uh, pluck the day, literally, meaning you want to get the best of your day, like experience the the fresh fruit, the bright sun. It's not about going and making your day as best as you can. It's actually more accurately plug the day. Uh, the French have something called the rayon d'entra, 
the raison d'etre. It literally means the reason for being. What I'm going to talk about, Ikigai, it's Japanese version of raison d'etre. It's their reason for being. So you might ask me, hey, Roger, why are you talking about Japan specifically? It's very interesting because we know that Japan has a lot of things coming up. I'm sure most of you guys here are familiar with the Mary Kondo concept. Does it spark joy? <laughs> All right. So in Japan, millions of people have something called Ikigai. It's their concept for being. I'll get into it a little bit later. And the reason why I want to talk about uh, Japan culture in particular. But uh, something that we can say here in Singapore, like let's bring it back in, is that what we have here is gasuism. <laughs> when we talk about Singaporeans, we have this general feeling that we are a bit pragmatic. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we have this thing though called gotong royong. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of it. It's, it's a it, word of origin is from Indonesia. It basically means the sense of communal, communal spirit or kampong spirit. It is lesser and lesser nowadays as we continue to grow as a country, as a nation. But uh, I read this article, it, basically they interviewed this guy called William Wan, the general secretary of the Singapore Kindness Movement. A lot of the campaigns and the movement were in fact efforts to push and encourage this Gotong Royong. Although we are all staying in landed properties, HDB flats, and no longer the small kampong communities, we still can always be kind to one another, to help out one another. In fact, there, there was one HDB uh, poster which promotes, hey, if you can't just go out and talk to your neighbors, why not just Skype and Zoom them in, just to be involved with their life and know what is going on around you. We can start to see that there are cultures that Singapore has adopted as a country moving forward, but of course there's more to be done, right? So what should we do? What can we do? This brings us to Ikigai. So this is a book that I'm reading. Again, it's available on the NLB mobile app as an audio book and as an ebook. So you can just listen on the go as I'm doing right now on the commute, on the bus commute or on the train commute. So Ikigai, what does it mean, right? It's actually an H.O. Japanese ideology that has been associated with the nation long life expectancy. So it's actually a combination of the words Iki, which means life, and Gai, which means to be worthy and worthwhile. Why Japan, you ask? Interestingly enough, Japan is one of the countries, in fact, the second country in the world with the most number of uh, elderly folks, people who live above 100 years old, which they are called centenarians, by the way. The first place is the United States, but because Japan population is smaller, but even if they are, even though they are second place, they are the countries with the most centenarians per density in the country, and they have the most super centenarians, meaning like not super saiyan, but basically they live more above 100, they live about uh, 110 and beyond. They are the wow. super centenarians. So according to those born in uh, Okinawa in Japan, that's the island with the most centenarians in the world, even more than the United States. Yep. Ikigai is the reason why we get up in the morning. Our motivation to throw away the big covers, get up and get going and doing something with our life. And Japan also has the oldest living person in the world until uh, sadly in April 2015, he, she passed away basically. It's this lady called Misao Okawa. Yeah, he li she lived for about 117 years and 27 days. Wow. Uh, her record has since yeah, been broken by another Japanese. So I think if you, if you Google the oldest living human in this world, he is 119 right now. I'm not sure uh, uh, whether his record has been broken or is he still with us. But again, this is uh, another dude in Japan. So it's very interesting how Japan is able to have the country with people living up to long right lives, right? So when uh, they interviewed this Misao Okawa, she, they ask her, what is your secret about uh, having this long life? What is your, what's your self-care routine? All she said was eating sushi and sleeping. <laughs> so, no stress, uh, no stress. Uh. No, no stress, right? Yeah, just yeah. eat and sleep. Uh. That, that is one way to do it. Do you know how <laughs> old is our very own super centenarian in Singapore? Anybody want to guess? We have centenarians? I don't know, yes. man. We have uh, super centenarians. Super centenarians. Oh, okay. Maybe 105. 111. Mm. Mm, close, but no. The, the last previous one was 112 by this Teresa Shu. 
but her record has since been broken. This one, uh, I'm not exactly sure it if it has been fact-checked, but the oldest super centenarian in Singapore died in 2012 at the age of oh. 115. Wow. It's this Madam Fadila Nor um, Abe. So she, her, her grandson had a story that even at the age of 100, right, she was able to walk up 10 floor stories of their house. Yep. And she wow. was a woman who co constantly does community work, give to the public, and use her spare time to do charity work. So it's a very touching story about the woman, the oldest living woman in Singapore who lived up to 115. Wow. Very touching story. We'll move yes. on to talk about uh, more about Ikigai, how we can achieve it, what is, what is it about. Basically, in the book, and if you Google Ikigai, they have this chart, right? What you love, basically you make a list, a few lists. What you love, what do you think the world needs, what you are good at, and what you can be paid for. And in the middle of all this circle is achieving Ikigai. I but used this to one do, did, yeah, I used sorry. to do an artwork uh, for this one company. And then they requested one wall to be Ikigai. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what I had to do. So the, the company, they requested this whole uh, Venn diagram on the wall. Oh my and gosh. then they wanted the... Uh, so they gave me what is their passion, mission, everything. And I had to mm. like put it in all. Yeah. Nice. So moving on, in the book itself, the one that I mentioned earlier, they surveyed about 100 elderly folks in the community on Okinawa about how what is their secrets to having their good and long lifestyle. So here are some of the questions, uh, some of the answers that were given when they were questioned. So five tips for you. Number one, don't worry about life. Take it easy as you go. Number two, cultivate good habits. Having the sense to rise up early, make good use of your day. And number three, nurture friendships every day. So try to talk to people, not just your own group of friends, but different people, people you have never thought to speak to ever before. Uh, research have also shown that when you interact with new people all the time, your brain is constantly actively trying to make connections <coughs> and it actually slows down your brain aging process. <coughs> nice. Oh, excuse me. Uh, number four, live an unhurried life. Have a plan, have a schedule. <coughs> Don't rush through life without uh, planning for it. And last but not least, be optimistic about what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or the ne next year. <coughs> In a way, the key to their long lifestyle is to keep themselves busy, but busy with the tasks that allows them to relax and sit back and take in everyday life. One thing I also want to share with you is uh, a healthy diet. Healthy diet meaning the foods that you intake has to be high in antioxidants. So for, for you, for you guys, the vegetable will be broccoli. Anyone knows what are the top three healthy vegetables for you? Because we know there are a lot out there. There's lettuce, there's mushrooms, there's carrots, there's, uh, there's all sorts of celery, spinach. Do you know what are the top three? Top three as in what? Uh, most uh, uh, beneficial for you. Uh. Most yeah. beneficial for you, yes. Broccoli is one of them, I know, right? Mm -hmm. Celery? Uh, Salary? Okay, fruits, fruits, uh, like berries? No, no, I'm talking about vegetables. Vegetables, uh. Um, beetroot, uh. beetroot. Beetroot. Uh. Be yep, beetroot, maybe. Uh, tomatoes? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so you have pretty much nailed it. There are carrots, there are broccoli, there are mushroom, kale, turnips, and spinach. But the top three that I'm asking for, as I've mentioned here, broccoli has high concentration of water, minerals, and fiber. What we, what we want when we look for vegetables is the content of water and minerals. So broccoli is definitely up there. The number one is actually spinach. Oh, because yeah. there are a lot of nutrients in spinach. Number two is carrots. Number three is broccoli. So these three, spinach, carrots, broccoli. SCB. SCB. SCB, just remember yeah, this. That's why Popeye like to eat spinach. Yeah? Yes, yeah. it is very, very good for you. Uh, it's fish, a reason. Okay. When we talk about meats, meaty fish, you need to eat like salmon, tuna, mackerel for the antioxidants. For fruits, strawberry will be uh, one of them. Citrus fruit, apricots, they help eliminate toxins from your body. So try to have like a piece of fruit in between your meals, at least uh, one in one meal of the day. Berries is also good. They are rich in those cytochemicals antioxidants. But the most important thing here is what you're eating for. Are you eating for minerals? Are you eating for a source of water? Or are you eating for vitamins? 
So for, for example, dry foods, you, you might not think they contain vitamins, but they do. They give you energy. So it's not like say, okay, I eat dry fruit, they are salty, they are sweet, and they are generally unhealthy. But that's not the case because they do give you a source of vitamins that you, otherwise you won't be able to achieve from eating meats. Olive oil is a good antioxidant. That's why I use it for like frying and cooking. And red, red wine, like they say, is good for its uh, antioxidant and it generally gets your blood pumping, but in moderation. Alcohol is best to consume in moderation. It's not something that you take all the, all the time. Yeah. Uh, if you're interested, take a look at the NLB mobile app to read about Ikigai or like the Danish have it, the book of Fuga. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, I think that concludes my sharing today. I hope you guys have learned something. Uh, if there's any question, I can take it. Otherwise, I will start the quiz. Yes, it's quiz times. Good sharing. Yes. Uh, Mr. Uh, nutritionist and uh, motivational speaker, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm in. Okay, everybody's oh. in. Let's go. All right, let's go. Question one. <laughs> How did Singapore perform in the 2020 World, Health, World Happiness Report ranking of happiness based on data from 2017 to 2019? Super easy answer, multiple choice. Everyone got it oh! correct. Nice. Oof, All right. Good job. Good job. Moving on. Question two. Oh, no. Which of the following is not a criteria for happiness ranking in the World Happiness Report? Pretty sure correct. Oh, all the faces. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know, sir. There are six, right? I mentioned. Bit of guess. Oh no! Oh, oh, <laughs> <I see. laughs> CPI is one of the uh, economic indicator of a country, but it's not GDP. It's different. GDP oh man! Region. So who got it right? Yeah. <laughs> who what? Who got oh, it right? Fine. Who got it? Yeah, wow, it. Well done. Nice. So they measure whether the country is corrupted, whether people are living healthily, yeah. long lives, and their social support and gen generosity. So they don't measure CPI, they measure GDP. GDP, yeah. Gross domestic product. All right, moving on. Good job, Hannah. Moving on. Question three. What is the country of, of origin for the Huga lifestyle concept? This is what I'm talking about. Oh gosh. Don't tell you, don't tell you. <laughs> <sighs> Go and borrow this book. It has tons of nice, wonderful pictures about being cozy with the environment. Oh gosh. You can borrow the picture version where they just oh. list all the nice, beautiful pictures. I got this wrong. Oh man, Huga. <clears throat> Alright, everyone has answered. <clears throat> Denmark is the correct answer. Switzerland <laughs> and Sweden is not. <clears throat> Denmark, all right. Danish, right? You mentioned Danish, right? So yeah. Denmark, uh, uh, okay. Oh. All right. So which of the following is the French word for one's purpose for reason of living? Is it cis la vie, raison d'être, creme de la creme, or je ne sais quoi? Creme de la creme. <laughs> creme de la creme à la Edgar. <laughs> Anyhow, sir. Uh, I just... Say la vie. Say la vie. All right, raison d'être is the reason for being. C'est la vie, that's life. Creme de la yeah. creme is the top of the top. Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi is a quality that can be described. So uh, there's a certain quality about that guy. We say that guy has a certain je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. Like, uh, what is it called? Uh, charisma, is it? Yes, exactly. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's je ne sais quoi, Nadia. Question five. What is the Japanese concept of raison d'être, a reason for being? Hey, Someone did answer. Never... Right, the trick is right, you. Shafiq, is it yes. you? <laughs> <laughs> just now, just now, Shafiq yawning here. Eh? <laughs> wow. Okay, super centenarian, centenarian are people who have reached the age of... Super Saiyan. Yeah. Super Saiyan. Super centenarian. Uh, our country has our very own super centenarian also. Uh, All right, okay. the correct answer is 110. Yeah, I thought it's 120, but the thing that you share is, is yeah. common already. Is it? 100 centenarian, super is 10 years more. Okay. Okay. 
Question seven. How old is the oldest Singaporean that has ever lived? Oh gosh. I don't, I don't care whether it's been recorded, just ever lived. Ever lived, huh? Oh gosh. You mentioned this just now. <laughs> What's the magic number I'm looking for? <laughs> oh no. Be confident with your answer. The answer is 115. Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> I was like uh, negotiating um, whether it's 112 or 115. Yeah, yeah. Really 115. I also, I also. Just like so you know, right? yeah. The Chinese lady yeah. 112. But this, ah, yeah. magic, ma ma this magic beat the Chinese lady. Wow, Who yeah. answered 113? That's not even the. <laughs> it's okay. Someone got it wrong. The one smiling is the. <laughs> <laughs> According to the Ikigai model, what do you get if you manage to cross what you love? And what you're good at. Okay. Oh gosh, know. typing it again. Uh. This one, Nadia oh. should know. Nadia should know. The, the Venn diagram where you are good at. Roger, Roger, can you give MCQ what are the four? The four <laughs> yeah, man. I, I can't recall. I should know. Uh. I don't know, sir. Okay, okay I, I give you, I give you, okay? Uh, you have your profession. You have your vocation. You have your, what else? Your, your passion for something. And your, your love for something, right? What was the last one? Hurry up, the time running out, Roger. <laughs> okay, you have your, uh, your, prof your professional vocation. Mission, mission, mission is the last one, yes. Mission is the top, right? Oh, <laughs> wow. that's, that's, a big, that's a big clue, Nadia. Okay, okay, okay. And the answer is passion. Oh. Because, because you're not getting paid for it. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not something that helps the world. It's just something that you love and you're good at, right? What you love so to do a, and what you're good at. Oh, okay. So it's your passion, basically. Alright, good try. Good try for this. Can't team. remember. One guy never <laughs> answered. Alright, time's up. I like it's freaking, what is it? Is it mission or whatever? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, last but not least. Which of the following is not an example of advice from the elder living community surveyed? Is it don't worry? Is it live a hurried life? Is it be optimistic or nurture friendships every day? Not and... It's not, it's not. Not right. They didn't say that. Roger very kind so I give 40 seconds. <laughs> but if you put shorter timing then more stress, huh? Yeah um, man. So live an unhurried life, not a hurried life, basically. Alright, last one. Life. This is the final one. See if you can get it correct to get more points. What are the top three vegetables that you should eat? List uh, any one of the top uh. three. Hey, lah, ma. Yeah. so easy. Oh, action. Yeah. Just one, uh. Broccoli is my favorite uh, veggie. Broccoli, so yeah, broccoli. my favorite. Yeah. But the nice. stem is quite hard, right? That's like kids. I stem. love that you should like uh cut it off, then boil it, then you eat with some sauce. If you don't want to make it healthy, just add butter. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. It's also nice. I tried before. Yeah, I thought carrot was one of the answers, Roger. Yeah, I, carrot was I one. Think right. the, I think the queen didn't. Didn't take, but I will record it. Who answered carrot? Me, it's me, it's me. Okay, I'll give one point to Nadia. Don't look at mine. Don't look at mine. Wow, three winners, ah, not bad. Congrats, Claudia, Hannah, and Nadia plus plus one, so it's nine 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 eight eight. <laughs> wow, nice, nice. Uh, good sharing, Roger. Thank you for sharing this. Uh, you can become okay. a motivational speaker when yes, you retire, yeah. or you can switch <laughs> job doing that. It's very interesting. Uh, yeah, those of you, yeah, yeah. Uh, interested can can check it out, uh, And we also have it on our uh, ebooks, right? Yes, you can download and them. Go, yeah, go. check it out. So it's very interesting. Uh, thank you guys for participating, and it's been quite enriching. Thanks, Roger, for sharing this. And thank you. Uh, that's it. Thank you. See you guys again. Bye-bye.